fucking bill. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to fucking boo bombing stories <laughs> with Big Irish Jay Hollingsworth. What's up, my fellow bombardiers, my boo crew? Ugh. Oh God! Yuck! Oh, yuck. <laughs> fucking boo! <bear. laughs> yeah. Uh, today I have one of my my best buddies, uh, one of the best comics you can see. Uh, he's Dude, I don't. Even, I can't even go over the list of all your credits, all the TV shows you've been in. Uh, yeah, I'm very lucky that way. Uh, funny, you should ask. We were. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a show that exists. Yeah, my good buddy Greg Romero Wilson. Thank you, Big Irish J. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, G- Greg is one of my. I mean, and I think. God damn it! Hold on, I'm trying to adjust this mic. I think a lot of people probably say this. Greg is one of the like, he's just dude. You think of Greg or you're around Greg, and you're just you start smiling. He's just one of those people <laughs> you, you love to hang out with and be around, and just and just fucking just funny on off stage, and just the the best. Uh, and your bombing story is a, a great one because I was I was there. So you're not just there; you're a part of it. Yes, yes. So tell us your bombing story okay and, well here's the thing first of all thank you jay <laughs> thank you for having me on the show everyone knows i i'm a huge fan of yours i think you're just a, you, everyone loves you you know you're you're such a great guy and a brilliant comedian and it's been so much fun watching you just really take off recently it really has been amazing to watch you're one of those comics that when it happens for you nobody's like why him you know <laughs> thank like, you i appreciate they, that it, it's true they're like yeah yeah it's his time it's his time he's getting it so you know congratulations buddy it's always thank great you, to brother. see you doing new stuff um the uh, bobby you uh, know i mean uh, uh, there you go <laughs> am i what am i supposed to be crying um <laughs> so, <laughs> so it had been a long week and let, let's set the stage here. yes that's that's what i love about so just a little preface uh I tell people that, you know, I, it's not this bombing stories aren't just for comics. Like I'll have musicians come on, somebody that was public yeah. speaking. You bombed some, you bombed on a first date, whatever. But the thing I love about when comics are telling their bombing stories is because it's what we do. We kind of paint a picture. So yes, that's, I, I love that you said that and go ahead. Yes. Let's set the stage. Yes. It had been a long week in Las Vegas. And here's the thing. People don't realize you could think about what Vegas does to you in two days. That's the average stay in Vegas is two days, maybe two and a half. The intrepid person stays three. And usually the third day is to rest from the first two days. Right. Right. You book a club in Vegas. You're there, generally speaking, for seven days. Yes. This is day five, and I wish I could say that I had restraint when I got, like, you know, most smart people, intelligent people, they get to Monday and they're like, listen, I'm here. for Everyone's going to be going nuts like it's Saturday night. Every I need to ga- I gauge it, yeah. you know, pace myself. Marathon, oh. marathon. Oh, not Wilson. No, no. Oh, no. no. Daddy came for a sprint, a 26 mile sprint. Oh, and fuck. I just don't, I don't gauge it right. I don't, and I know this, and I've done it dozens of times, and I do the same thing every, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been driving with the feature on the way to Vegas, and I'm like, listen, we're probably going to take it easy tonight. Yeah. Then we'll, you know, and I make this speech that's no, not for them, it's for me. So I know to fucking take it easy. <laughs> and then we get there and they, you know, they, the Vegas gets in me. <laughs> and you're staying at the casino. You're in the casino. You're an elevator ride from the stage. Oh. Like it's the most. And then, then the club, you know, they they are very kind with the beverages. <laughs> and so some clubs like L.A. clubs are stingy as shit. New York clubs, they are very loose with the beverages. But L- Vegas, they just. Fucking, it's it's a uh, uh, bacchanalia seven days a week. So they're like, why? I mean, we were. It was okay. So immediately, day one. So now day five. Okay. Yes, we're just a, a little more details. So uh, Greg is headlining L.A. Comedy Club. I'm featuring for him at the L.A. Comedy Club, uh, which is at the Stratosphere. All right, yes. go ahead. Back when I was lucky enough to be able to have you as a feature. Um. <laughs> Because, I mean, everyone knew you were about to be a headliner and there was, you know, 
And that's why, anyways. So day five, and you're great at restraint. You're just, you know, you don't, you know, because you can still get your dick sucked, you're single, you can do those things. I can't, I'm married, so I get trashed and then beat off. So <laughs> I, so it's day five. And I, and I went to, I, I hadn't seen James Michaels. Or there's a 6.30 show, a 6 o'clock show, which is a magic comedy show by a brilliant guy named James Michael, which if you haven't seen it, you must see it. It's his, it, it's the wild, I just, you must see it. So, and he's going to, he's going to actually be on here too. He's yeah, going to do this show. He's fantastic. You must Great see James guy. Michael. Yeah. Go see him live. You, you'll never regret it. So I hadn't seen it in probably a year. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. It's Friday. I'm going to go hang out at James Michael's show first, then do my show. Then we'll hang around a little bit at the 10, then go downtown. To, I was just going to be a night of comedy. And I was like, so I'll pay, you know what I mean? But I'm going to pay it. Cause I don't want to get too drunk yeah. before my own show. Right. Six o'clock. Immediately. James is like, Hey, let's do some shots. Come on. Let's do that. And I'm like, all right, you know, it's Friday, <laughs> start doing shots at six at the six o'clock show. We start getting drunk. I have the eight o'clock show. I managed to hold it together, have a great eight o'clock show. But then, you know, but I mean, once I'm on stage, they're like sending me drinks. Uh, yeah, like, I was I'm, sending you like doubles of that's 151. Right. Yes. And, of, like 151. And I mean, I was getting zoozed. Okay, so. <laughs> Now, I, at this point, I, I had no intention of, of going on stage uh, it, any further. You know, we were just going to go hang out down at the Dirty. And so, uh, we, you know, we have a few more. I mean, by the end of the show, I remember by the end of that show, I was trashed. Now, yeah. here's the thing. I Listen, I had a little, I had some cocaine. And <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you and say this is the first time. I, and in fact, I'm going to tell you the truth and tell you that it, it, it was, it, I was accustomed to knowing that I could do a little cocaine and kind of right the ship and keep going. Right. And people that, that do uh, cocaine um, uh, recreationally um, know what I'm talking about. It's just a little zoop zoop and you're like, okay, back. <laughs> you know, so I knew that I had the, the coke and, and stuff. Now, keep in mind, I don't do coke anymore. I want everyone to know that. But, uh, you know, this is good old, good times, Greg. So, <laughs> so we, which by the way, this story is only like two years old. So we go, we go to, so then I, I don't even remember what happened between 10 and midnight, but we ended up going down to the other show. I'm sure we had some more drinks. We get down there and they're like, Hey, do you want to do a guest spot? And now I've got a little Coke in me. So now I'm like, okay. Oh, no, okay. And again, this formula has worked for me many times. Um, but it's also backfired tr fantastically. And, and this is one of those times. So, so then he's like, okay, so, and now he says, Jay, you, you want to do a guest spot? Jay's like, of course I want to do a guest spot. So me and Jay, and then Ken Gar, who right. was, I, was he headlining or featuring? Yeah, Ken was headlining. Ken was headlining. And so, okay. So then now the cocaine's got me. Now, sometimes when the alcohol and the cocaine meet each other in my brain, it creates a uh, drama, Greg. Okay, which is a Greg who just wants to get real, <laughs> wants to get sincere with you, wants to tell you what he really, uh, he really admires you. Right. B wait. Before you finish, uh, let me say this. Uh, so I'm, and I'm going to interject at different parts to tell you like what was going through my head. Yes, on my fine, side. totally. Okay. So, so uh, Gabe, who <laughs> who runs the Dirty at twelve thirty, um, you know, he asked Greg, "You want to do guest spot?" Greg's like, "Yeah, well, yeah, I want to do guest spot." And then Jay, "You want to do guest spot?" Yeah, of course, totally. And Ken, your headline. I like your I, impression of me. <laughs> I love yelling. Uh, and then uh, yelling, yeah, like my baby. Yeah, I think there was one other person that did a guest spot at first. Was the yes. maybe? But I remember when he was doing the lineup. Uh, and he was like, okay, Greg, and then Jay, and then Ken, and, and Ken and, and me are kind of looking at each other where I'm like, oh, fuck, because for those that don't know, Greg is a crusher for what <laughs> Greg, Greg's a crusher for one and the dirty show, everybody knows Greg and loves Greg. And that's like his playground. Like, yeah. that, you know, so it's like, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to have to definitely bring it because Greg is about to, he may get a standing ovation. I don't know. He's about to fucking destroy he's amped up he's hyped up it's a fucking hot crowd which it always is and so 
this, this I'm going to have to fucking work after Greg. Okay. So that's all I just wanted to say is about okay. the lineup. So now I decide I'm like, I, it reminds, I, I'm like, I get to go in front of these guys and I'm like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> I'm going to have so much fun with this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all closers. Okay. Which means, you know, of all, you know, the various sets that I've done over the years, each one had the big closer. So instead of doing like material to a closer, I'm going to do just like four consecutive closers. This is the plan. And it reminded me of the time when I was at the Laugh Factory in, in Los Angeles. I just moved from New York and I'm in LA. And I decide to share this story with the guys. Remember, this is coked up, Greg. This is party on raging, Greg. And I, and I, I come, guys, and I tell them, I, and I lead, and then the, again, remember, drama, Greg, full effect. And I go, you know, guys, when I, uh, First moved to LA, I was, I was a pretty big deal at the Laugh Factory. And I'll never forget when Jamie Masada gave me my shot at headlining the eight o'clock show, which had been Joe Coy's spot for two years. And Joe Coy wasn't on the show. I was the closer. And Joe Coy just showed up and decided to do all closers right in front of me. And he crushed so hard the audience from Bananas, and I went on that stage, and guys, I took an L. I took an L that night. And tonight, you're taking a fucking L. Yeah. And, I- <laughs> and as he's saying this to me, as like, Ken and me are listening to the, yes, you yeah, do. Like, I was like, I was like, oh my God, dude, is, is Greg going to be okay before he's set? As you're telling it before you say that you're going to fucking give us an L. <laughs> dude, like, like you said, tears are welling up and I'm like, holy fuck, dude. Is he all right? I'm like, dude, I was like, Greg's a good fucking actor. <laughs> holy shit. So yeah. <laughs> and Ken and I are just like, you motherfucker. And that, and then that also put in my head, I'm like, I already knew like it's gonna be tough following you, but now I'm like, fuck, this is gonna be fucking. He's gonna get a standing ovation. That's how I'm like, and, and that's just what be I prepared. Went, and yeah. let's also be clear, that is exactly what I tend intended to do. Right. And up until that moment, I was in full control of my situation. I knew exactly what I was doing. I I was like, I'm ready to go. But at some point, you know, between me saying that and going on stage, the mix got away. It, it blanked me. It blanked my mind where I got on stage and like, 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 you know, in your mind, you have this rotating kind of like click, 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 click of bits that you could do. A click, yeah, click, yeah. Click, click. To me, it's to me, the way I visual it is like looking at a, a, a room full of weapons mm. and you're like, oh, yeah, OK, yeah. do I use the dagger, the machete? No, the cannon. We're going all cannons, you know? And, and and so I'm like picking my, but none of the weapons seemed right. I, I couldn't figure out how to launch any of them. And I, my mind was coming up and, and I'm just up there. And I'm, I'm like, I, I just remember not being able to, to remember the bits that I wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> I blame, I full on just zip, like I just like, blank, like, Something shorted, right. and 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 I now the, the slate was blank, and I couldn't find any of my weapons. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and I just kept saying, and and okay, uh, so there was okay, so in the in the oldest wiring of my stand-up comedy career, there's a joke that is a horrible joke that I used to do in New York because New York you could be really aggressive and really shocking, and so I had this joke, and I I, I and, and which was. You ever take a shit so fat it felt like rape? Yes. And so I tell that joke. And then I finish the joke and I can't remember any of my other jokes. And I'm just walking around going, and I start saying, isn't Coke great? Like, I <laughs> yes. thought, and, and in my mind, I'm saying it almost like sarcastically, like it's killing me right now. Like, <laughs> it's erased my brain. Isn't this great? And then I would start doing the shit like rape joke again. Like I was stuck oh, in this yeah. loop. And then the audience is laughing in, in a weird way. And I'm like, I've definitely said this before. I think I said this already. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, what? And I just couldn't, I couldn't find anything. It was, it was a repetition between, isn't Coke great? You ever take a shit so bad it felt like rape? Like just the worst possible 
loop uh, uh, <laughs> meant that I couldn't escape. I couldn't get out of it. My brain would find couldn't find anything else. So after a minute, I think somebody, I think, I think uh, finally, and it's funny too because I remember being up there, being like, "How long have I been up here? <laughs> like, how long have they let this go on?" And then I get the light. I remember seeing the merciful light from Gabe. And I was like, okay, let's say good night. And I get off the stage. And and I just remember it came like, okay, we'll, yeah. we'll, let's, we'll see what's going on with the let's all forget about that. And then uh and I and here's when I knew it was bad. Now again, it, at this point, I'm still kind of running blank. And I remember kind of running and I kind of stumbled into you. And I look up at you, I go, Was it bad? Do you was remember what bad? I said? Yeah, and you go, and you go. Buddy, it wasn't good. <laughs> no, I, think I said that, I went like this, it, pretty pretty close. I go because you know I love you. I, I know, I, and and, I, that, and that's how I knew it was bad because <laughs> you said it in the most loving way that I you go could like let this. Me down. I go, I go. I mean, it wasn't your best, that's and you just go, <laughs> and then you responded with fuck, fuck. I do write that fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> fuck. I knew it. I knew it. And let me tell you something. That crowd, because they know me so well and I know them so well, they've never let me forget it. Dude. Every but, time and I, I'll, I, I also, ahead. sorry, I was going to say also with that, because you, you know that crowd, they know you and they love you. It's also like, it, it's a bomb, but it's not like a bomb where they're like, boo. It was more like fucking Greg, fucking, you know, like yeah. what the fuck, man? You know, like they're, they're kind of on this this bombing with you, so to speak, you know? It, 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 well, and that's like, they're used to seeing me in this condition, but not till like an hour or so after the show. Right. You know, when I'm just stumbling around the casino, you know. So they've seen this, Greg, but never on stage. And, and so, and I just remember like, you were sweet about it. You made some joke about it that I had to be like, yeah, well, I deserve that one. And then Ken got got up there. I remember Ken's vein. If I were, I, if I, I believe it was like, wow, that was like watching your drunk uncle die or something like that. And I, I was, I was like half mad, but also like, well, at least he salvaged it with that. Like, yeah, I think know? I said something like, I did. I just, I think I said like, I just wish Greg could let loose a little bit. Or That's something. what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish Greg would just cut loose a little bit when he's. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was so upset at myself, and I still am to this day because it was completely self-induced. I, I, and, and here's the thing, and I, I'll say this: if, if did I learn a lesson? It was a lesson that I teach, and mm. that is, I disrespected the craft. I got on that stage when I was absolutely in no condition to get on the stage. I thought I was bigger than the craft, that I was a master of it to a level where I could autopilot my way through it. And in the, and that to me was the biggest lesson and greatest disappointment of it was that I, I really disrespected the craft that night. It really wasn't, that's not what audiences show up for. That's not what we're supposed to do. When we take that stage, I should have uh, taken greater care with it. I could have lost that account which, you know, we work very hard to get accounts and then shows like that ruin them. And and the fact that Gabe was so understanding. Of course, he gets pretty fucked up on stage too. So yeah. he, he's, he's seen me get, you know, like we do it together, to be honest. But, but I mean, we, he was, you know, they were forgiving, the audience was forgiving, the crowd was forgiving, the casinos, he was forgiving, you know. And so I have to, I have to, to thank my lucky stars for that because that was, that was the big lesson. And I've never gone on stage fucked up like that since. Um, because I just, it, it, that was the most disappointing thing about it was I did, I failed to do my job. I got up there and I failed to be a comedian. And that's, that, that was, that one really, that was a heartbreaker about it. How fortunate though, that, uh, if, if that was going to occur anywhere, it occurred with that crowd uh, at the dirty show, you know, where no, it's absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. Dude, that's like, I remember Ken too. I think Ken took a video or something halfway through oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's like, got video. This he's got is, video this of is, all my tragic shows. <laughs> this is Greg burying us or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is Dude. like Greg giving us an L. Dude, when, you, I, when you did the whole thing about like, and tonight, you guys, do when you were telling that whole story, we both were just like edge of our seat and just like, oh my God, where's this going? <laughs> and then when you said that we were going to take it out, I was looking at Ken like... <laughs> I'm, I don't. I'm, I haven't even seen. Him. He hasn't said a word. I don't know if I can follow him tonight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to follow. Him. And you know the thing is, it's like it's like when you see the a great trailer to a movie, 
Oh, and you're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> this looks great. And then you go see it and you're like, that all the good parts were the in best the, in the, the trailer. trailer. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's because the movie itself was garbage. Oh that's fuck. what this that night was. Oh, and it's and but the the best part of it, the 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 biggest greatest thing of the whole thing is we got the story out of it and we got to experience it together. And yes, we did. And, and oh. we'll always have that and you know, it's so funny because I blanked out on stage before, but it's usually from Red Bull. It's never been from uh-huh. cocaine. <laughs> For some reason, Red Bull has made me go blank. I, it, Red Bull is basically liquid cocaine. Right. You see someone that loves Red Bull, that's a fucking cokehead. Whether they know it or not, they're fucking cokehead. Because that's, did you know that that's the origin? That that was what it was these German fucking chemists that got together were like, how can we create an herbal cocaine drink? That's the whole origin of Red Bull, and they fucking succeeded. And that shit blanks me out harder than cocaine Holy did. Shit. But that night, cocaine Red Bulled me, so it happens. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So before we have you go, what's uh, give me your give me your social media and what do you want to what do you want to plug? I'll probably put this out tomorrow. Oh, uh, you know, uh, please check out my new half hour special that's on YouTube. It's uh, on the Funny Media Group channel. You can also go to my channel uh, at Greg Romero Wilson. Uh, well, on YouTube, you know, Greg Romero Wilson, just search that and you'll find me. And uh, so it's called uh, Hindsight is 2020. Please check that out. And um, uh, Instagram, I'm posting uh, new comedy clips every single day at Greg Romero Wilson. And also on TikTok, I could certainly use the followers because I've only been on there for like two weeks. So I have like, I have like 17 followers, but all my <laughs> clips are on there. If you want to see a bunch of great stand up clips, they're on there too. And uh, don't follow me on Twitter. I hardly ever use it. Um, <laughs> and also, if you want to learn stand up, um, I'm actually about to launch my my uh, my main class. I'm going to put it all online, so you can just uh, watch the lessons directly online. Oh, that's on, great on Teachable.com, the Comedy Institute on Teachable.com. Yeah, I so, sat in. I sat in. I, having I, when I first started stand up, uh, the listeners probably know this. I mentioned it before. I did a stand up class, and I went. Um, uh, and sat in on one of Greg's classes just to observe. And I told him afterwards, I was like, dude, you do it. This is great. This is great for, for comic or people trying to learn stand up. You did, did fucking has a great class and uh, it's really good. So I, I highly recommend that. And I recommend if Greg's ever in your city, uh, they can see your dates on your website, right? Yes, they should be on there, but yeah, sh- follow me on Instagram. I always post the, the flyers and everything on there. That's where the notices really go up. I'm pretty shitty about updating the calendar on the website. <laughs> it's an experience, though. You have to see if you get a chance. You have to see Greg live. And uh, thank you for doing this, Greg. You know I love you. And, I love you uh, too, buddy. I can't wait to come back to Vegas, hang out with you, oh, and do dude. some more shows, buddy. <laughs> yeah, have some more uh, coke and uh, alcohol. I'm done with cocaine. <laughs> no more cocaine. And to the Boo Crew, aka the Bombardiers. Until next time, you'll like this, Greg. Bom voyage! Fucking boo.